Okay, so what is meant by conditional probability then? I want you to imagine something. Imagine you've got a drawer full of socks and you've got 10 different pairs of socks. And you need to take two pairs of socks out. So when you go for your first pair of socks, what's the probability that you will pick a particular pair of socks? Okay, don't worry about the color. Let's say they're all black or something. When you go for the first time, the probability of you selecting a particular sock is one out of 10. So you've got that, you put it aside, you put it in your bag, but you need a second backup pair. So when you go back, there are now nine pairs of socks in there. So it's not gonna be a probability out of 10 anymore. It's going to be out of nine. So when you go back for the second pair, it's gonna be one out of nine. Hopefully you understood that. I will be using this in the first question and throughout this video as I tackle the different questions and then you'll begin to get the hang of it. So let's begin with our first question behind me here. So we have um, six red marbles and four green marbles in a bag. James takes at random a marble from the bag and he doesn't put it back into the bag. What he does is he takes a second marble from the same bag. Complete the probability tree diagram, which we have drawn already, and we just need to fill in all the different probabilities. And then part B, work out the probability that James takes the same color. So let's write down a few things that we know. We know that there are a total of 10 marbles inside the bag because we've got six red and four green marbles, which gives us a total of 10 marbles. So we know that the probability of a red marble is going to be six out of 10, and the probability of selecting a green marble is going to be four out of 10. So these are the probabilities of selecting a red or a green marble. So let's begin with the first branch here. So the first marble that James can select, we can just put this in. So it can either be a red, which is six out of 10, or it can be a green, which is now, this is where people sometimes fail to write the correct probabilities. So I want you to pay attention here. When we go for our second marble from the back, you have to follow this route here, okay? So let's start with this here. The second marble, what are our choices going to be? What are our probabilities going to be, all right? So let's start with this. We want to choose a red, we want to know what the probability of choosing a red marble is. Now, what's happened already? You see, this red follows on from selecting a red in the first marble. So we've already taken out a red marble from the bag. So now, are we going to have six red marbles in that bag? No, we are not. We are going to have one less, which is five red marbles. And what's the total amount of marbles in the bag? Remember, we started off with 10. When we were here and we were selecting a red marble, we had 10 marbles in total. If we've taken a red one already, not only does, do we have one less red, but we also have one less from the total of marbles in the bag, okay? So the total was 10, here it's going to be nine. Now, what about the probability of the green marble for this branch? Now let's trace it back again. So this green, what's the probability of a choosing a green now for the second marble, if we've chosen a red marble already? So if we've chosen a red marble, did we take a green one out? No. So the number of green marbles in the bag stays intact, which is four to start with. We haven't taken a green marble out. So we are going to have four out of how many marbles in total? Remember, we've taken one marble out already from the 10 when we uh, chose the first marble. So we're going to have nine. And another thing is those two branches have to add up to one, so five and four is nine, so nine over nine is one. So they also need to match up. So that's another way you could work out this one, having done that. Hopefully you've understood that. Um, try to figure out what the probabilities are going to be for these two at home. Pause the video quickly and write it down. And when you're ready, press play again and I'll go for it. In this branch, we have chosen a green marble as our first marble, okay? So if we've taken a green out of the bag, the number of red is still going to be the original number of reds, which was six. But the total number of marbles in the bag is going to be nine. So we have six over nine. Now, another way you could get this, remember I said earlier, uh, was that they add up to one, so it's going to be three out of nine. But just so that you can check, we've got a green one on the first one, and we've selected a green one on the second one. So once we selected 
uh, one green from the total amount of greens, which was four, we're going to have one less on the second round. So we have three over nine. So this is what is meant by conditional probability, where the probability of the second event is impacted and changes according to what happened in the first event. Now let's look at part B of this question, which says work out the probability that James takes the same color. Let's have a look at our tree diagram. We want to know the probability where James selects the same color. So where are the same colors? We can have the probability of a red and a red, or we can have a green and a green. Now, hopefully you've paid attention to the language that was being used. We can have the probability of a red and a red, or we can have the probability of a green and green, which is the same color. So if you recall, and in probability means times, and or means to add. So we are looking for the probability here of red and red. Now, what's the probability of red and red? It's six out over 10 times, because that's what and means, six over 10 times by the second red, which is five over nine. So that's the probability of red and red, or represents a plus. So we're going to add these two probabilities. So we want the probability of a green and a green. So let's look down here. So the probability of a green is four over 10, the first one, and a second green, so four over 10 times by three over nine. Now we are just going to calculate these. Now, if it's a calculator paper, then of course you can just put this into your calculator. But if it's a non-calculator paper, then you need to be able to work these out using multiplication of fractions. So let's do that. So six times five here is 30 over 90, and four times three is 12 over 90. So we have 30 over 90 plus 12 over 90, denominator is the same, so we can add them across on the numerator, so that's 42 over 90. And you can leave the answer like that, or you can choose to simplify if you want to. Right, so the probability that James takes the same color is 42 over 90. I want to add something to this question, a bonus question if you like, and that is, what is the probability of selecting at least one green? So what is the probability of selecting at least one green? Let's look back at our probability tree diagram. We want to look at all the combinations of having at least one green. So we can either have green, green, or we can have a green and a red, or we can have a red and a green. That's one of the ways we can do it. And you heard the language, you can have green and a green, or, so we multiply these, or we can have a green and a red, and we multiply those and add to that. Or we can have six, I'm sorry, a red and a green, and we multiply those and we add to that. So that's one way of doing it. But an easier way of doing it is to do one minus the probability of two reds. As we know that all probabilities are out of one. So every, all our number of outcomes, they have to add up to one. But if we take away the probability of having no green, which is two reds, then we leave the probability of having at least one green because we've eliminated where it's just two reds and no greens, okay? So what we can end up doing is fewer calculations to do, of course, is just to do one minus the probability of two reds, which is six over 10 times five over nine. And we can calculate that. So six over 10 is 30 over 90 and it's going to be one minus that and because we're not using a calculator we'll just do 90 over 90 to represent one so it's 90 minus 30 on the top which is 60 over 90 and we can leave that or we can cancel down um, and that gives us two over three so the probability of choosing at least one green is two over three